The most powerful Doppler radar means weather is more complete on ABC2 News. Tonight on Nightline, science of the spirit. The Christian practice of speaking in tongues, it defies explanation, but there are now brain scans that might help us understand it. In the genes, the Parish sisters are twins. They shared everything, but each struggled in silence with an eating disorder. Are the genes they share to blame? And political spin. Hillary Clinton has a new approach to raising campaign cash. Send Bill to the gym. That's a sign of the times. From the global resources of ABC News, with Terry Moran in Washington, Martin Bashir and Cynthia McFadden in New York City, this is Nightline, March 22nd, 2007. Good evening. Some Christians call it the purest form of prayer. Others say it's just plain gibberish. But to those who practice the art of speaking in tongues, it is a liberating experience. Connecting with God, they say, beyond the constraints of normal language. And they claim that the sounds they make are entirely involuntary. That is, they're not formed by any kind of rational process. Now, it's been difficult to test this assertion until now. Nightline's Vicky Mabry reports on a new scientific study for the latest installment of our series, Faith Matters. It is an ancient practice mentioned in the Bible. St. Paul called it speaking in the tongues of angels. Jesus' apostles were first said to do it at Pentecost. The technical term is glossolalia. Most people call it speaking in tongues. There's a vast number of people out there that because they did not personally experience it or have been taught against it all their lives, there's no way they have an ability to embrace it. So that's common. We're still mocked and made fun of. That's not stopping Pastor Jerry Stoltzfus or others in his congregation at the Freedom Valley Worship Center in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, from using what they say is a God-given gift. It's almost as if I'm able to tap into God's heart and what he wants. I get goosebumps, actually. You can feel him all around you, and you can feel him speaking through the words that you're saying. It almost sounds like a foreign language, but actually, those who speak in tongues are not saying anything in any known language. With the gift of tongues, I can trust the Holy Spirit to figure out what needs to be healed. He will use what sounds like gibberish, like any other language sounds like gibberish. Uh, he, he will interpret that for his purposes and his uses. We say things in our own English language, but speaking in tongues is a heavenly language that we're going to God and Jesus intercedes for us. They say they have no control over what comes out of their mouths, that they're swept up in a rush of ecstatic religious feeling, and that the Holy Spirit is speaking through them. Do you hear yourself? Oh, yeah. Sometimes I think I sound like a total idiot. It's almost all in yellows and red here. At the University uh, of Pennsylvania, Dr. Andrew Newberg is looking for an explanation for what most regard as unexplainable. I mean, it's not language. It's not regular language, at least, that would normally activate the frontal lobe. Newberg is exploring the relationship between faith and science, studying what happens in the brain during the deepest moments of faith. We're really going to look at this very, very powerful force in human history of religion and spirituality, I think we really have to take a look at how that affects our brain, what's changing or turning on or turning off in our brain. They're going to go around very fast right now. He's recently published a study of Americans speaking in tongues. Remarkably, he discovered that what's happening to them neurologically looks a lot like what they say is happening to them spiritually. Let's make sure we got your whole head in there. We asked Pastor Jerry Stoltzfus to come to the university to have his brain scanned while he speaks in tongues. This way, we could see the experiment in action. I don't think faith is anything to be afraid of from science. Science validates faith, so bring it on. Whatever the facts are, bring it on. Just go ahead and, and you can begin prayer. And First, he's told to pray in English. 
Father, I pray for each of the family members involved in this study. Grant them what they are looking for in their personal lives, for, for their vision and their potential. Then he's told to speak in tongues. This is the first scan when he was in prayer, speaking in English. This is the second scan when he is praying in tongues. Pastor Stoltzfus's scan showed that his frontal lobe, the part of the brain that controls language, was active when he prayed in English, but for the most part it fell quiet when he prayed in tongues. When they're actually engaged in this whole a very intense spiritual practice, religious practice for them, their frontal lobes tend to go down in activity, but I think it's very consistent with the kind of experience that they have because they say that they're not in charge. They're, it's the voice of God, it's the Spirit of God that's moving through them. Dr. Newberg says the results were even more dramatic on subjects who were scanned without a nightline crew in the room and who were not speaking in tongues on demand as Jerry Stoltzfus had done. Study participants like Donna Morgan first listened to music, then went to where the spirit took them. When I heard about the study, I already knew within my spirit that it was going to be proven that there's a part of our brain that we have no control, that when the Holy Ghost is interceding for us, we're out of control. In earlier studies, Dr. Newberg looked at what happens in the brains of Buddhist monks meditating and Franciscan nuns praying. And it was noticeably different from what happens to tongue speakers. That's in fairly stark contrast to the people who are like the Buddhists and the Franciscan nuns who are in prayer because they are very intensely focused. And in those individuals, the frontal lobes actually increased activity. But Dr. Newberg isn't out to prove or disprove anything. He can tell you what happens in the brain, not why. Were you skeptical going into the studies? If by skeptical, the question is, is this a real phenomenon, meaning that this is truly the voice of God speaking through them, that's a much more problematic question, I think, and something that I'm not sure that we've specifically answered simply by doing our study. But for those who believe, it doesn't matter if science can find the footprints of the Holy Spirit in their 21st century brain scans. When you've experienced this, you don't really care what anybody else thinks. It's personal for, in the first place. It is something between you and God. So we don't really care if it's validated or not, but it's fascinating when it is so that people that have thought we're crazy can have something to look at to say, maybe we're not, we're still crazy. We're just not as crazy as they thought. Thank you so much. This is Vicki Mabry for Nightline in Philadelphia. Father, we thank you. The science behind spirituality, our thanks to Vicki Mabry. And just ahead on Nightline, shared secret, twin sisters struggling against the same foe. Is there a genetic explanation why both of them developed eating disorders? And spin cycle. Bill Clinton goes hunting for campaign cash at the gym. Now that's a sign of the times. Oh, what a perfect day. Oh no, nasal allergy congestion strikes again. It's everywhere, outside, and in. <laughs> Prescription Nasonex helps relieve congestion and other nasal allergy symptoms. Maybe that's why 6 million people use Nasonex last year. Side effects were generally mild and included headache, viral infection, sore throat, nosebleeds, and coughing. <laughs> For congestion and other nasal allergy symptoms, ask your doctor about Nasonex. Let go of the day. Go out back tonight. For the salads and tasty creations. The steaks juicy, the shrimp sweet. Tonight, let go. Go out back. If pain is keeping you from sleeping at night, 